For those of you who actually got here at 3 o'clock, I thank you for your patience. What would a Miller family event be if we weren't late? Nobody? No one's going to laugh at that? All right. Behind me, we've been running a slideshow of my mom, Kathleen, who's right here. Um, so I'd like to thank everybody for coming out today. Uh, I see friends. I see family. That was a genuine surprise. Thank you, Stephen Paul, for coming out. Um, thank everybody for coming out. This sucks. I don't want to do this. I didn't write anything down because I've spent the last two weeks trying to figure out how to start a eulogy for my mother that didn't begin with Kathleen Miller was not a happy woman. And I can't think of another way to start because she wasn't. Um, the woman I remember, unfortunately, was very angry. Uh, Crystal Morrison and Greg and Dad and Laura all heard this. Up until a couple of days before she passed, she would describe herself as a dancer. But she's a dancer who wasn't able to dance for half of her life. She's a woman who had a lifelong fear of asphyxiation and suffocation, and that's what took her out, and that's not fair. But talking to Mattrick Black earlier this week, he, um, he didn't know that mom was not a happy woman. He said to me, what are you talking about? Your mom was happy. Your mom was cheerful all the time. Your mom was always positive. And I think that says a lot about her, that she was able to put on that face for others. Um, my mother was a woman who was always willing to help out others. Uh, there are a few of you who are here who <laughs> she helped out greatly. And there are um, a couple people who weren't able to make it today who mom helped out greatly. And my mom, except to my dad, my mom was basically a mom to um, everybody. And there are a lot of people in this room who've uh, been given advice or guidance or support by her. And um, there's a woman in the photographs behind me who is happy and smiling and out and active and doing things. And most of the people here never knew that woman. You. Uh, knew the knew the Kathleen Miller who was confined to her wheelchair and wasn't able to canoe and whitewater raft and play in the snow and climb rocks and dance. I, I don't know who that cute kid was. He's gone now. Um. My mother was a fighter. She was a very stubborn woman. Um, I actually had a doctor's appointment yesterday. I'm actually a little sick. Um, but the appointment I made was with her primary care physician, Dr. Bruce Mutter, who um, said to me that she lasted a lot longer than any of her doctors thought she would because despite her health problems, she was a strong woman. And when she passed, she had been in St. Jude's Hospital on um, a BPAP machine, pressurized oxygen 
because her lungs were filling with fluid. And when we removed the oxygen mask, I left the room to call my godfather, mom's brother Tom, who cannot be here today. Tom is why there are two video cameras running for him. But I went downstairs to call Tom and call my wife, Laura. And the hospice nurses said, we don't know how long she's going to last. It could be 15 minutes. It could be two hours. She lasted for 18. It was about 3.30 in the morning, and I was sleeping on the, um, they had a bench in the hospice room. And I woke up, and Dad was kind of sitting in a chair with his feet stretched out on another chair. So I woke him up, told him to take the bench. I was going to go home. And I talked to Mom. <sighs> and I told her that she had done very well and that she was going out the way she lived her life, being stubborn, proving everybody wrong, because, you know, 15 minutes, two hours, no, it's 15 hours later. And that we all admired her for her tenacity and her strength. But that it was time for her to go so that dad could go home and get some rest. Um, we're doing this as an informal memorial. We obviously don't have a priest. My father and I are not religious people. Mom was. But she was also angry at the God that she believed in because she was a dancer who didn't get to dance for half of her life. So I will not be leading any prayers. I'm sure my father will not be leading any prayers. If when we're passing the microphone around, if anybody else wants to lead the room in prayers, please do so. That would be appreciated. Um, I want to thank Tim and the Legion for letting us do this here. Um, this is where Laura and I got married, and I could be wrong, but Dad, I think that might have been her last good day in terms of something to look forward to, something to celebrate, something to be around for. Am I right? Okay. I mentioned my Uncle Tom. Since he can't be here, I asked him to send me his words. And I said that I would speak them. Because that's all I could do for him. And of course, I forgot to print them out before coming here. Typical. Oh, but before I read them, I have to share my morbid humor. I have a t-shirt on underneath this. It's actually a Monty Python spam -a -lot shirt. It says, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> because I got my sick sense of humor from my mother. She also bought me the shirt and this jacket, which she liked. <coughs> yeah, here's where I'm going to lose it. Tom McGinty writes, my sister Kathleen 
and our brothers and sisters had a pretty average life growing up in St. Petersburg, Florida. Mom and dad were both immigrants, legal ones. While they were Irish, mom was born and raised in Scotland. We all had our aspirations and dreams. Kathleen loved to dance. She studied ballet, toe, and tap dancing. She was good at it, but did not aspire to be a professional. But through college and afterwards, she would still do dancing wherever possible, even in the house. Um, we're past those, but there are some photos of her performing here. That was a parenthetical. She eventually met Mike, and they did the usual falling in love and marrying. And eventually, with great desire, they had a baby named Michael. That's me. Everything seemed to be going their way until she began to have neurologic symptoms. Eventually, when they moved to Tallahassee, Kathleen went to the neurologist and obtained a diagnosis, uh, charcot marie tooth For quite a few years, Kathleen was quite angry about having this problem, a problem she shared with her sister, Anne. She frequently said that just about every activity she loved was taken away from her and as time progressed over about 35 years, so the disease. But as she physically worsened over time, she began to mellow somewhat to what was happening and got to where she could live with it. I thought she did very well considering what was happening and how restrictive it was to her life. This is a horrible disease. I am typing these remarks on my computer. Kathleen could not do this. Thank God for Mike and Michael to care for her. I always say at Mike's passing, the Pope should immediately canonize him. Tom's right. He, yeah. Tom continues, as a boy during World War II, I attended a movie titled God is My Co-Pilot. I've always remembered a poem in it titled High Flight. And even though I have never been a fan of poetry, now that Kathleen is passed and is in flight, it is my hope that Kathleen can not only fly, but dance and move about freely and do as she pleases. Oh, I have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter silvered wings. Sunward I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun-split clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of, wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence. Hovering there, I've chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of air. Up, up the long, delirious, burning blue, I've topped the windswept heights with easy grace where never lark or even eagle flew. And while with silent, lifting mind, I've trod the high, untrespassed sanctity of space. Put out my hand. And touch the face of God. You just volunteered to go next. <laughs> She's the silent one. I won't make her go next. I will ask for volunteers. Otherwise, Tiffany, it's going to be you, because you know why. Please. As a side note, you, you and Tony found out you were pregnant again about a week after the wedding, right? <laughs> and then the second one, I put for my son. Yeah. I am 
I'm Tiffany, and I was um, Kathleen's hairdresser and friend for many years. Um, she was like a second mother to me. Uh, always there. Uh, I know Michael saw her as angry, and she, I did get to see those sides, but for me, she was strength and inspiration and always a positive outlook on what I needed. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I'm going to miss her so much. And I share the same religion that she grew up in, which was Catholic. And I know she's up there dancing and has her ballet shoes back on, just the way she always wanted to. And uh, oh, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to pass the mic to whoever's next. And oh, don't I love you guys? <laughs> don't leave me hanging, guys. Thank you, Ken. Hi there, my name is Ken, Ken Jedeke. I'm a good friend of Mr. Mike here. And I didn't know Kathleen. Uh, I believe I've met her. Uh, the quantity of the number of times that I've met her uh, probably is less than the amount of digits that I possess on my body. Um, but I st sat there listening to words that were being spoken, the memories being relived up on stage behind me. And I was thinking, what are wakes for? They're for us. They're for us to relive the good memories and to bury some of the bad memories, to allow ourselves to be happy with the person that we had and to realize that we have so much more from them than they take away when they leave. And if Kathleen is to be judged by what she leaves behind, Mr. Mike, a fine, upstanding young man, intelligent and moral, and such an, uh, an excellent friend, that if Kathleen can raise such a fellow like this man, then she was worth remembering, and, uh, and we all should feel very, very, I don't want to say blessed because I, I don't believe any of that, but we should feel so grateful that we had somebody like that in our circle of friends. Thanks, everyone. All right, someone else, come on up. There we go. We got one. That's right. Don't leave the man hanging up here. Lighter. I expect, I expect greatness. Oh. And we expect because it's there. Hi, everyone. I'm Natasha Troop. I'm, I've known Mike and the Millers for well over half of my life. Um, and I want to tell a story about Kathleen. And, uh, and this will tell you everything that... that I believe to have known about her. Um, some years ago, I was working in San Francisco, and my job dried up, and uh, I had to come back to LA. And I called up Mike, and I said, "Do you think I can crash in your house for a couple weeks until I get back to my feet in LA?" And uh, there was never a question about it. And I ended up crashing on the couch in Mike's basement, and um, amidst all the things that were otherwise there in Mike's basement, that there was a little bit of room on the couch for me. Um, and uh, I needed to, to borrow a car to go up to my father in Malibu and, uh, and get some money so I can get a place in up, up, in, up in L.A. And so she, Kathleen, gen uh, generously lent me their minivan. Um, and so I went up, and my dad gave me a check. And my father, at the end of my father's street in Malibu, there's this little side piece that goes up to PCH. And I was right behind a county vehicle, and there was a sheriff right over to the left. And the, uh, 
the guy driving the county vehicle, as he was going forward, backed up and bashed into the minivan. And so, uh, because the sheriff was there, he had, and because it was a county vehicle, he had to take a report. It turns out my license had been suspended. <laughs> so they had to tow, they had to tow the minivan to the the tow yard. Um, and so uh, uh, Kathleen uh, and Mike were really gracious about it, <coughs> and um, they they didn't impound it for thirty days because it wasn't my vehicle. And, um, but the thing that always got me was that. Um, I paid for the tow fees, and she somehow managed to get the money back from AAA. I don't e know how it happened, but she called me up and she's like, I, I got the money back for the towing. And I'm like, <laughs> she, she always gave me great advice. And, um, and you know, Mike, Mike is one of the few people on earth uh, who is a sibling to me um, by another mother who always treated me like her child. And so, um, anyway, thank you. I'm surprised. You told me earlier this week you weren't going to say anything. Uh, I'm not going to say much. Uh, <coughs> when Michael and Laura got married here, uh, Kathleen said everything. She didn't let me get up and talk. Uh, she, uh, I, I'm the silent one. I don't know about the strong, but I'm the silent one. Uh, she's going to be missed. Missed by me, missed by M Michael, missed by Laura, missed by three of the four cats. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you can see from some of the pictures we used to like to get out and do things, and that was that was really the shame of it. That uh, when she progressed in the shark on Marie Tooth, we weren't able to get out and do things that we like to do but she she found other things um, she killed half a rainforest with the catalogs that she got at home so <laughs> yeah you know they they blame global warming but it was really uh, Kathleen going through the catalogs and uh, since she couldn't go out and shop she order a whole bunch of stuff and then return 90% of it. <laughs> so so uh, uh, and she always told me what to do, so now I'm going to have to think for myself, I guess, but we'll try. Anyway, let's face it, it's a mixed blessing. Uh, y we're all sorry when somebody passes away, but, uh, you know, there, there's going to come a time for all of us and she she did it reasonably well she had her she had her faculty she knew she was dying she got to say goodbye to everybody uh she had her last cup of tea exactly the way she wanted it in her own cup new flunky over here was supposed to provide the tea but i don't know what happened i baked the cake but sh but the tea didn't show up Oh, just no water, just no water or cups. I, I get, oh, okay, all right, all right. <laughs> way, way in the back on the right, there's two very un, there's a very un, unpretty cake, but it was her favorite, and uh, I made it last night, and it's not from mix. It's it's an old joy of cooking book, and I had to just make egg separate the eggs and make egg whites and cream the cream the, the stuff and anyway it tastes all right it's pretty crumbly and uh, <coughs> and she uh, she had her favorite uh, 
frosting that I think I made. Uh, it comes out all right. It's not pretty. And also, she's been gluten-free for a while. And if any of you, Tiffany, are gluten-free, uh, there's some gluten-free brownies there. So probably tastes better than the cake, but what can I tell you? It came from a mix, you know. Throw two eggs in it, and that's the end of it. Um, we haven't been able to travel. We ha haven't even gone to restaurants the last year or so. That's why she looks so much thinner uh, than in some of the other pictures. But I don't know. Whatever it is, it is, and I'm sure she's at peace. And she did get to say goodbye to whoever she wanted to say goodbye to. and uh, it, it went relatively fast, so that's, that's really good. So, Michael, you can have your mic back. Mike. And he says there's water someplace. Some cops <laughs> don't. Somebody made tea. There's water somewhere. Um, Dad mentioned the tea. Um, Mom also said that one of the last things she wanted to eat was uh, an ice cream sundae. She didn't get to have her ice cream sundae. But we do have ice cream and hot fudge in the back, and we'll bring that out when we're done talking. And anybody who wants ice cream sundaes can have ice cream sundaes. And anybody who doesn't, that's more for me, I guess. Matrick, you looked like you were coming up before Dad did. You want to? Thanks, man. Hi, my name is Matrick. Uh, I wanted to say something on the wedding, too, but I, I didn't. I'm not very comfortable speaking in front of groups or whatnot, but I can tell you this much. I've, I've known Mike for uh, 24, 25 years, something like that. And when I first met Mike's mom, she was, uh, she was already in the chair. And, uh, but you wouldn't know it. Uh, she was always busy doing something, everything. He came to her for advice constantly. She was eager to give it. Uh, uh, one time stuck out in my, my mind more than any other time was when uh, one day you were out of town. And I don't know what you were doing, but uh, I got a phone call from her. and. She asked me for my for my help, and she never asked me for help before about anything. And uh, I came right over, and it was kind of awkward because I've never been there without you know Mike being there. And uh, I'm like, "What do you need?" And she's like, "I need you to help me take these cats out from stuck under the sink." <laughs> and uh, okay, I helped her do that, and uh, it took quite a while, by the way. <laughs> they were really up in there. But um, afterwards, she sat down and she talked to me, and. Uh, I don't think I've ever shared you with this mic, but uh, she told me how grateful she was that I was uh, Mike's friend, and that uh, all these years had gone by, and, uh, <clears throat> and she was really happy that <clears throat> that I was such a, uh, a good friend to you. And I'm like, well, it's the other way around. He's been a good friend to me, you know, and you've been a great influence on him. <clears throat> he's a good guy. You guys know Mike. He's uh he's just like his mom. The more I, more times I had interfaces with her, she'd uh, remind me more and more of you. Stubborn, intelligence. I got her way with just about anything. We had some business disputes. Uh, Mike and I doing little side jobs. There'd be contracts and whatnot that we'd be confused about whatnot. She'd always clarified it right up. Told Mike what to do, how to stand up to somebody. She stood up for everything. Um, she, uh, she was amazing as all hell. She, uh, she got what she wanted. I think this is what she wanted. She wanted to go out the way she wanted to go out. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, she's, she is in a better place now, Mike. You know that. Um, I know right now she's here. I know this for a fact. Right next to you. No, no, no. She's here right now. And uh, she's proud of you. I know she. I know. I know she really is. <laughs> but I know she's. She's very proud of you, and she's. She's here now, and uh, she always will be. And I want you to think about that. You know, she's with us all. Anyone else? 
else? Um, I only had the pleasure of meeting Kathleen two times. Um, I found her incredibly wonderful, but the more I get to know about her after her passing, the more I find that uh, her and I were a lot alike. And so I kind of um, guess I missed out on that opportunity, but the reason I came up is because no one in this room wants to pray. And if Kathleen did believe, then I feel it's my responsibility to at least give her a last prayer, whether you believe or not. Um, that's just what's respectable. We are all on this earth together. And if she was a strong woman and she got what she wanted, then what she should have is last words to her father and her creator. So I'm gonna ask everyone to go ahead and bow even if you're atheist or don't believe or don't like it. That's what she wanted. And Mike wouldn't have asked. And if I'm the only one left in the room that can do a prayer, then I'll do that. Is there anybody who'd like to come up and join me in prayer or am I all alone? To our creator, the man we call Lord, him, the one, the only, thank you. Thank you for creating such a lovely spirit. Thank you for taking her legs. Thank you for not letting her dance because maybe that's what made her yours. Maybe that's what made her strong. Maybe that's what made her wonderful. And maybe that is what created the beautiful life around her. Happy or unhappy, we thank you, Lord, for giving us such a beautiful creature to watch, understand, and remember. Thank you for her love, even if it was angry. Thank you for her stillness, even when she wanted to fly. Thank you, Lord, for all the extra time that you gave her so she could change and influence everyone here in some way. She touched every single one of us, and without her, our lives would not be the same. Thank you, Lord. We pray in your name. Christ, amen. amen. Thought it might be David for a minute. Now I know I put that camera in a dumb location. Yeah. Um, I got I didn't know your mom very well, but um, I got only met her two or three times. The last. Uh, time was here, and um, that was for your wedding. And um, you guys don't really know me, uh, maybe, but uh, I have like a big like fear of doing this, like talking in front of people, and so um, that's probably why Mike chose me to marry he and Laura. <laughs> and. Uh, so, um, I, I, my memories of the day aren't particularly crisp because I was a big bundle of nerves. Uh, you know, I was worrying about the whole thing. I'd been like rehearsing all sorts of stuff. But um, I remember right actually out that door, uh, down that ramp, I was, um, I was there with your mom and your dad and we are all getting ready to go up and do our part. and. Uh, when I get nervous, I kind of start cracking jokes and stuff. I don't remember anything specifically that we were joking about, but I remember your mom uh, 
you know, they, a lot of people have said she's a very generous spirit, and she definitely was, and that she laughed uh, at my jokes, which I can't remember, but they couldn't have been very good because I was very nervous. But, um, you know, that little bit of laughter, it was, it was enough to give me a little bit of confidence to get up and be in front of people and do the, the task at hand. And so that was a gift that, that I got. But we all sort of get these gifts. I know your dad was talking about making a cake and doing it the right way and not out of the box. And that was a gift. And we're all sort of just composites of the people that we've been around. And so that'll never leave us. You know, when you make the cake, when you make the tea, you eat the sundae. All these things are just, it's the parts of the people that have left us to remember them by, and it's the way that they keep going, even when we can't see them anymore. I just wanted to say that. Anybody else? Thanks, Mike. I think I want to game this up a little bit. I'm the only one who holds it up here. Best if you were down here. Can't hear? Yeah. Mic off. <laughs> Mike's making mic jokes. <laughs> Just real quick, wanted you guys to know how it is. Uh, I picked up my son from Saturday school to come here. And I pick him up, and he's like, you know, what are we going to do? I said, well, you know, we're going to this service, memorial service. He's like, well, is there going to be any candy there? I said, you know, there's going to be hot fudge sundays there. He's like, let's go. So, you know, we're coming down. He's like, well, what are we going to, what, what do we do there? And I said, well, we're kind of just there to support our friend. I said, you know, the person that we're going to talk about isn't going to be there, but we want our friend to know how much we cared about him and his loss. So that's why we're here today. And I thought she was a nice lady. She, <laughs> you know, she, any friend of Mike's, she was so thrilled to meet you, so thrilled. I thought she was a great lady. Thanks. I'm looking at you, Ruby. I don't know. I'll go look. I'll run both cameras now. Once again, Mike directing his own event. Um, my name's Chris. Uh, I'm a really good friend of Mike. And uh, unfortunately, I'm an old pro at all these wakes. I've gone through four this year alone. And uh, so the only thing I can really tell those that loved uh, Kathleen and Miss Kathleen is that she, I think that we, especially the son, and th there are parts of, of you that are, there of her that are with you all the time. I know that like, and this is kind of a little off topic, but I know that like, uh, you know, I had, I've had some car problems uh, recently and as I was trying to repair these car problems, all I could do was hear my dad in my head uh, telling me, yeah, you should have just checked the oil. You should have done that. Why, why didn't you check? So uh, is he with me? Uh, absolutely. And I think that when, um, when someone passes, they're, they're always with you. So Kathleen is not gone. She's within all of us. We all have some memory of her, my, uh, you know, the only memory that I have, I, I didn't get to meet her very much. I did, however, take care of her cats one time, and she was very, very detailed on how those cats needed to be taken care of, so I will always remember that, and definitely that is within Mike, very detailed, and uh, she was a really nice lady, and she was very funny. Um, so, uh, I mean, like, again, she's not gone. Um, she's within everyone that loved her and cared about her, and you will hear her. You know, you'll hear her talking to you. Thank you. 
next wide shot. Oh, okay. This is the transition, and then you can go back in on the, on the next person who comes in. That was dumb, pulling out to a wide. That one's on a wide. There's, I got nothing to cut to now. Hold on. All right. Boom. All right. I, I think Mom would be marginally amused that I'm kind of worrying about something petty like cameras, but it's keeping me from falling apart right now. Um... Anybody else? Oh, Robin's going to beat you to it, Greg. I'm Robin. I'm a friend of uh, his, mom of Crystal. I had the pleasure of meeting Kathleen one time, and that was at their wedding. So I wasn't going to come up because I don't know what to say. I just realized there's a camera. Turn it off. Um, but. But I've heard people comment that she's here, and that's the one thing I want to reiterate, and that's my belief, is that we don't leave. I tell, I told my kid for years, I'll probably help you more when I'm gone than I'm able to here, because guidance in just little, in little ways you may not even realize, and that's my belief. And I hope that, you know, when those days come, something happens and you think, Mom, you go, wow, maybe it really is. And you just give her that acknowledgement that is maybe she really is there guiding, hel helping, talking, because that in will encourage her to be there more. And uh, I also want to comment because somebody mentioned the great child she raised, and I can attest to that. I think so highly of that young man. Well, actually, all of my kids' friends. And on that, I'm going to go eat some of Dad's cake and a little bit of the topping that would have been Mom's Sunday. I love you so much. I love you too. Despite Dad being self-deprecating on the cake, it's actually good. I, I had a piece. Greg. <coughs> I've known Mike for, gosh, 28 years, something like that. That old? Yeah. <laughs> we weren't even in diapers. But, uh, no, I was 24. no, more than, yeah, you were in high school. No, I wasn't. Yeah, you were. No, I wasn't. Yeah, you were like 17 years old, if that. Ah, uh, that's right. Okay. Well, you were high school aged anyway. So 24, 25 years. Yeah. So it's at least 25 because you were not more than 17. Anyway, point is, um, I was fortunate to have met your mother uh, right after I met you. Um, I guess we're you know we're at the point where we're telling stories about knowing Kathleen, and I, I won't make it up, but I'll try to make it good. Um, you know, and, and the thing is, everybody's kind of talked about how she was a bit of a mom to them, and that's, I'm going to say the exact same thing because it's true. Uh, you know, when I was in college and considering dropping out and taking a semester off, uh, you know, she was there and advised me and uh, tried to help me get a job and tell me what I should do for my career if I wasn't going to finish school, and eventually I did actually finished school and she had a hand in that and I'm very grateful for that to this day but uh, she also gave me a spectacular wonderful friend and human being in Mike and I think that's the thing I'm most grateful to her for um, and I think there's a lot of her influence in, in the person Mike became so it just Say thank you for that. Next. Um, before I hand you the microphone, no, come up, come up. Greg, may I step here for a minute because I'm going to talk about you for a minute. Um. When 
mom was dying, I just, I want to thank Greg and Crystal because they were there every day helping out at the hospital. I think, <laughs> I think they may have been there more than I was. Um, and I know that they were willing to help out and get food and get drinks and, and, and talk to mom and keep her spirits up. So as long as they're standing here next to me, I just wanted to really thank them for being there at that time. Because they're good people. That was it. I didn't make what you're about to say any easier with that, did I? No. No. Not at all. No. I'm going to start with I must be Italian somewhere because food is in my DNA. I don't know what else to do for people when people are in the hospital but bring food. So that's part of what I do. Um, I didn't meet Kathleen except twice before she was in the hospital this last time. And I met her at uh, Mike and Laura's bridal shower and at the wedding. And very vibrant lady. And uh, thank God she saved me from having to bake a cake for the bridal shower. Because I was baking the cake for the wedding and Lord knows I did not have time to make another cake. And she offered to get the cake for the shower, which was awesome. Very funny lady, very strong throughout everything. And I remember probably the nicest thing she ever said to me was how much she loved my husband and how she thought he was such an amazing friend to Mike. And what I think of her and what I thank her for is for giving us Mike. Because what a kind and loving man. And I'm so grateful to have him in our circle of friendship. Um, and I just, I know this is so hard on him. And I'm so grateful that so many people are here to support him and his dad and to remember Kathleen because what an amazing woman to have held together this family and to have created this lovely guy. That's, that's all I got. Crystal turned the mic off before she walked away. Good girl. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Proper mic procedure. Um, okay. Hi, I'm uh, Steve Shangri. Uh, Kathleen was my aunt. My brother here, Paul, obviously her aunt too. I'm here with my wife, Vicki. Um, Kathleen of the McGinty five kids was the youngest of the five children and my mom Anne was the oldest uh, as it turns out today I'm the oldest of the McGinty cousins and Mike is the youngest so I'm like a lot of you for various reasons I didn't know my aunt Kathleen too well but what really help me have a feeling of what she was like was watching on the screen today and seeing that the photos that were put together of her life just kind of gave me a good f feeling and flavor of of the easier times she had um, and some of the harder times too but there's a lot of pictures of Kathleen and my mom up there and a lot of times I'm looking at them and I was going which is which and they shared a lot in looks, and they had, um, unfortunately, they both had the same neuro neurological disease. Uh, my mom passed away 
uh, 16 years ago before it had progressed as bad as Kathleen had to have it. But uh, there's a lot of, a lot of the cousins that I, luckily through social media, we don't actually have to see people, but we can talk to them. So I've kind of kept in, in uh, contact with a lot of the cousins, but Mike and I haven't done that yet. And I would just hope that we can, you know, bring that together and keep the McGinty side of the family going. And there's a lot of cousins that I know are thinking about you and, and, uh, and your family and your dad and your mom. And there was various emails that were going around the last few weeks uh, sharing stories that they got to experience with her. So I, I didn't get to know the family as well as I wish I had, but we're all family. And so we feel for you and feel for all you've had to go through. Thanks for sharing this so I understand what your mom's life was more like. Thanks, Mike. Um, funny side note, since Kathleen and Anne did look a lot alike, Chris Ruby, this one's for you. Um, You mentioned a lot of the, the, the emails that are going around, and um, of course, I saw them too, and um, I have a lot of the pictures that Tom sent, they're all downloaded on my phone. Um, there's only actually, only one of the pictures that Tom sent me ended up in this slideshow because I had prints of a bunch and I, and I wasted time scanning a bunch of them before realizing not only did I scan three different prints of the same picture, but Tom already sent it to me. But, Chris, a few days ago, looking at some of the pictures that Tom looked at this one picture and said, in this picture right here, you always marry your mother. Right here, your mother looks like your wife, Laura. Yeah, that wasn't Kathleen. That was Anne. That was Anne. I showed you the wrong picture. Um, so... Apparently, I married my aunt. <laughs> <clears throat> Actually, anybody who knew mom and knows me knows that I talk a lot, and there are only two people in the world I know who can come close to out-talking me or out-talk me, and they're both sitting at that table. This is Bieber. I would turn that camera if I were on it. So Tom, Uncle Tom, that's Amber and Greg, who both already spoke. They can out-talk me. Um, I do. I married my dad. That was what I was going to say because Laura's the quiet one. Uh, but uh, fortunately, Laura doesn't have a beard because. Um, <laughs> next Halloween. Next Halloween. Oh, menopause. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> it's a good line, Amber. Um, we actually, most people have spoken, so I'll just, Paul, Shaggy, John Pocock, Trisha. Trisha, mom really liked you. I, I, I gotta say, seriously, after, after the, uh, the, the bridal shower, my, my mom talked about how much she liked you for days. She was like, oh man, that was, that Trisha, she is a character. She is so vivacious. She is so, she is so, she, yeah. <laughs> you made a hell of an impression on her. I wasn't, that, that wasn't me trying to guilt you to come up. This is just kind of, <sighs> I didn't plan anything. That's okay. All right, well. Since everybody's been crying and stuff. Uh, <sighs> all right, so the sad part of this is, you know, I'm sorry, Mike. And because uh, I come from a different kind of group of kids and everything, we didn't actually know our friend's parents' actual first name. You we were just Mr. Miller and Mrs. Miller kind of deal. So I'm sorry, Mr. Miller, for your loss, because unfortunately, uh, <clears throat> this has been really hard for everybody, but uh, as my grandma said, we're not going to sit around here snotting and crying, so let's talk about something funny. And so when I think about <laughs> Mike's mom, 
<laughs> I do think about the time I met her and the first time I met her was the wedding shower. And uh, <laughs> Laura's unwrapping her gifts and uh, there may or may not have been some underwear involved, some lingerie being shown, and me thinking, okay, you know, I'm gonna be respectful of parents, since there were parents there. We're gonna, you know, hey, let's not have that showing. And then Mike's mom said, oh no, I bought that lingerie. And I went, whoa, can I be you when I grow up? And she said, Oh, honey, you got a long way to go to get to this dirty old lady. <laughs> and for a minute there, I said, yes, I do. Yes, I do. So that was really, <laughs> there's a bunch of other things that she said that night, too. Uh, she did reference about, have I ever given an old lady a lap dance in a wheelchair? I said, no. I've never given any lady a lap dance in a wheelchair before. <laughs> Wasn't gonna <to> start now. <laughs> she said, you can if you want to. And I was like, oh, I'm confused. I don't know where this is going. <laughs> but um, all in all, that because that bridal shower was funny. So, um, but she kept saying things like that. And I would look around and go, did anybody else hear this? And if anybody actually got a chance to meet her, then you had that moment with her. Everyone has had that moment where did anybody else hear that? Or was that just me? Because I swear this woman just said, you can give me a lap dance. I was, so I'm like, wait, and I'm looking around for anybody, and of course nobody heard it. And then she just laughed, she just kind of chuckled, and she turned to another conversation. And I'm just kind of walking around in a daze going, did that just happen? I think it did. Okay, so, but that was really her. I mean, I'll, you know, everybody talks about how caring she was and how loving, you know, how loving she was, but she was also really funny. And she was really funny about the most inappropriate things. So if there's anything that I actually appreciate her for, it's the fact that the sense of humor that she had and the sense of humor that she's instilled and left so that we all have funny stories and we all have inappropriate moments and we all have these times where we can look back when we get when you get sad because it's going to happen and you can actually think of the fact that your mom actually gave your wife underwear for a wedding and wanted you to wanted her to wear it for you to say it so <laughs> so that's you know I'm just saying. So, you know, that's it. And I love you guys. I love you very much. So. As a, as a side note to Trisha's story, um, mom, mom did have me get Laura's sizes, and then Laura's like, is your mom buying me underwear? I'm like, yeah, she doesn't have to do that tough shit, she's gonna. Uh, because nobody could talk mom out of anything, ever. Um, Patrick Herbert, John Pocock. Michelle, Cliff, either, anybody? You guys are about it. That's... <laughs> Francisco? No. Patrick's gonna come up. <laughs> I know, I'm putting everybody on the spot. I don't know very many of you people because I was a friend of Mike from about 1982 to about I guess 1990, and we didn't get back together till about maybe a couple years ago through a strange twist of fate, but um, I am very glad to be here. Um, I didn't know her very much in the recent years, but I did know her from that period of time when Mike and I were young, rambunctious boys and uh, got into all kinds of trouble. and knew how to push her buttons very much. <laughs> and I never wasted an opportunity to do so. But um, 
when it all came down to it, even when we, I would argue with her about this, that, or the other, only because I like to, she did one time just throw it down and said, Pat, don't you understand? I love you. <laughs> and um, there was nothing more that I could say. I remember the first time I ever had a playtime with Mike. I, he was, I was probably about 12, and he was probably about 10, and Mike was playing, I remember he was playing this video game and he couldn't quite do as well as he wanted to in, fr in my presence, even though he could do it himself. When I wasn't around, he got so angry that I remember he took a Rubik's Cube and <laughs> threw it to the wall and made a mark that was there until I didn't see him any, until I, we lost touch. But she drove me home from that day and she said, um, I was talking about, oh, Mike, he's, he's so upset, but it's all okay. And she said, well, you know, he just, wanted to show you what kind of guy he was. And I knew from knowing her, and all the times that I knew her before, and all the mistakes I ever made with her, even though she was kind of like a mom, or maybe I was kind of like the Eddie Haskell to the Miller house, to the woman that I also like to refer to because I was a child when I knew her as Mrs. Miller, um, I knew the love was there. I knew the love was there for me, the love was there for Mike, and I knew after that first day, even though we hit it off before then, I knew that this was going to be a great friendship because he came from good parents. And, um, and I'm just glad, and through that strange twist of fate that we've been able to get in touch again, that I was here to express that opinion. Thank you. Over there, some hibiscus and some lobiscus, right? Backside of water. No, no Disney joke. You just like now. I worked Jungle Cruise for 20 years. Don't you even try and make Jungle Cruise jokes at me, Miller? All right, I get it. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, you could talk about the boat. Hey, buggy! I didn't see you get here. Uh, What? What about the boat? Huh? I'm not remembering that particular story right now. I'm not at my most focused. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Through the kayak. Yeah. <laughs> that, um... Putting a hole in the kayak is nothing compared to shattering the toilet. Did you just get the down? <laughs> <All right. laughs> You've heard that story. It wasn't him. I'm the one who did it. <laughs> I was holding the microphone. Well, okay. He just had. Yeah, uh, I will explain that story later. It's it's it's. Uh, it's probably better to leave that one to everybody's imaginations, because right now they're just like, what did they do that could have shattered a toilet? Uh, it doesn't take a lot. I dropped a five pound weight into it to record a sound effect. <laughs> oh, you dropped, I was holding the mic, right, he dropped the weight. And I was, <laughs> and yeah. No. Um, No, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, we found that out the hard way. Um, speak, a actually, uh, mom and dad dealt very well with it. Well, it was mom who dealt with that <laughs> crisis because she came home first, and she, uh, she actually handled that very well. Um, she probably <laughs> she actually came downstairs. Uh, she used to beat the crap out of both of us at Pac-Man. Yeah. She did. Mom was a hell of a Pac-Man player. Um, John Pocock Owens, I keep looking at you guys because, um, and Wally and Sandy, because most of the people who've gotten up and spoken have been my friends. And you are the people here who were her friends. 
Everyone else has hit it on the head. John, it's going, but it's, again, I got the cameras going, it's for my uncle, this microphone, the, the, the real reason for this microphone is to go to that camera so that, so that Kathleen's brother can hear what we say about her, so I, I love where you're going with this, but I want Tom to hear it too. I'm sorry, I know, I'm putting you on the spot, I suck, you're a good man. <laughs> I'm not starting over though, I'll tell you that. Uh, see, where did I get to? Okay, we, we just got married and... Uh, my wife had a, an 11-year-old son, said, you know, you gotta do something so you know, know your son better, since I was now his father. So, YMCA, Trailblazers, Michael. That's where I met Patrick as well. So that's where it sort of fell apart. Patrick's known, as, known him longer than me, perhaps. Anyway, well, like I, I said. I think I met you, I think, on the same day. Well, that, that, that could be, be okay. Patrick on the same day. Okay, then it becomes a tie. But anyway, it's. Like, like everybody else has said, she was always there for you. She cared a lot. She was funny. Uh, we had our share of little things, too. I remember one time uh, Michael wasn't part of We always were going to his, his um, different performances. But one time, Mike, Kathleen, my wife Sue, and I went to the Magic Castle. Okay, now Mike was always pushing Kathleen's wheelchair around. Fine, so I, I took over, I gave him a break, I pushed the wheelchair around. We were about three-fourths of the way through the, per, the, the event. You know, you've got a nice husband, he's pushing you around. Yeah, right. I wasn't the husband, but I was still pushing her around. Uh, and she took it in great stride, and, and uh, I said, and, and they became a common part of our, our family. They were always there for Christmas, they were always there for Thanksgiving. Michael had to suffer with it. I told some of you know, the old ones that also have Christmas with us. Now all of a sudden I'm going to have a big problem because nobody but me is going to want to eat the plum pudding. She was at least willing to do that. So uh, I know she will be missed. Um, John Pocock mentioned his, uh, you mentioned John Williams, stepson, and since this slideshow's been running, um, there's the uh, one photo, well, we're still in the 1970s and these, so it's not going to come up for another 10 minutes, um, but, well, there's, it's actually the two photos, and it's me with the kind of the trim goatee and the slick back hair and the red shirt, and then mom's draped over my shoulder, and then dad's behind mom. And uh, that was John, John Williams took that photo. He came and did that portrait for us, and that, uh, <laughs> I actually think that those are, are um, I have all of them. I have every one of the photos that John shot that day, and I really, uh, it, it, it probably took me, when I was putting the slideshow together, when I, when I hit those, it, I probably stalled on those for about an hour and a half trying to figure out. I knew I was going to use one color. I knew I was going to use one black and white, and it really, uh, the photos I chose from that set, they're not necessarily the best photos of dad, and certainly the color one is not a good photo of me because I'm all squinty-eyed, but they were the two best photos of mom in that batch, so uh, that's why I picked those. Uh, Running out of people. Anybody else? Ice cream's melting. Okay. Okay. Well, in that case, I think uh, I think Dad called it. Let's eat.
Well, I haven't eaten, but some of you have eaten. But let's eat more. Let's eat ice cream. And um, <laughs> cake is darn good. I'll make sure I get some of that. So great. So thanks again, everybody, for coming out. And um, again, this technically was a 3 o'clock thing. So for those of you who are actually here at 3, thanks for your patience. And I'm, I love you all, too. And I, and I love Mom. And I'm sorry, I'm just kind of trying to stall and think if I have anything else to say that needs to go on the record. Um, this is just the stock plastic they give you at the mortuary. It was um, my... My father is not a particularly sentimental person. Again, those who know dad know that he's not a sentimental person. He's very stoic. And he occasionally surprises me. And um, we haven't found, we have not picked up what will be the final urn yet, but dad talked about how um, mom wanted her last cup of tea and Dad's suggestion was that we try and see if we can find a teapot shaped or teapot styled urn for Mom because Mom loved her tea. And uh, that surprised me. He's not a sentimental man, but when he does sentiment, he does it right. And... Um, I want to thank everybody for coming out, and I want to thank everybody for coming out, honestly, more for Dad than for myself, because he um, said of, the, of this memorial, he, he said, family's not going to come out. It's pretty much all going to be your friends, um, and that's true. Most of the people who are here are my friends. Um, but I want to thank everybody for coming out because uh, I've, I've heard from most of you during the week. I've heard from Laura, I've heard from Amber, I've heard from Shaggy, from Ken, from Pat, from Chris, Frank, everybody. You've all, you've, you've all told me uh, how how sorry you are, and um, and I mean, Bug was there at the hospital for a uh, for a day too. But I wanted Dad to see that Mom was loved, and I wanted Dad to see that she's had an influence not only on me, but on other people. And I wanted dad to see that mom was loved and will be remembered by people who aren't just me and dad. So, thank you all again and uh, go have some ice cream. And we'll talk and drink and whatever for until we go. Magic, you can tell I'm a techie because I'm obsessively over entering this cable.